Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to King of Kings this first Sunday in October. Uh, a few brief announcements. Uh, we have a jam today at 2 p.m. over in Kyle Hall. The next Friday dance is on October 15th. There are some sign-up sheets. Um, they need to be passed. The yes. Sign-up sheets, excuse me. The sign-up sheets are actually for the upcoming Oktoberfest. So when you get to it, please sign it and join us. It's a wonderful time. All the church supplies, the paper products, the drinks, the rats. You bring a covered dish and friend and have a great time. Music is provided. It's a wonderful time after service on the 24th. I'll say that now while I'm amped. Micro, mic, the October Fest and the sign-up sheets are going to go around for that. October 24th, after service, it's a covered dish. There'll be bratwurst and all the cutlery and everything provided. And beer. And, and beer. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> beer, beer. Um, and that, the sign-up sheets are going to get passed around as soon as I'm done with the announcements. While Wayne and Linda are retiring, our food pantry hopefully will continue. They're going to retire the first of the year. We're looking for volunteers to help to uh, run and manage the food pantry. They deserve a good retirement, and I wish you blessed travels. They want to travel. I understand that. I want them to travel, too. So hopefully by the time you travel, COVID will have been pretty much gone. Uh, Last week in Pasco County, the number was 162. So it dropped over 100 because the previous week per day, the average was 264. So it's dropping quite a bit. And there's two schools of thought. One will that it'll drop and pretty much fade away until it becomes what they refer to as an endemic. It's something like the flu that'll crop up. And those who've been vaccinated should be able to maintain immunity to it, just like flu shots. Um, but it should become hopefully less of an issue. When it gets to a certain number, um, we hopefully we can take our masks off in worship and go back to some of the more uh, traditional communion practices, passing the peace, and even children's sermon, because I see children out there. So since I see you here today, Riley, I've been waiting. Would you come forward? This is, whoa, it's inside. Okay, I'm trying to be safe. If your pastor was more organized, this had been available for you when you first took communion, but this is your very own Bible, okay? And it is a wonderful story. So next time I ask you your favorite Bible story, and you start reading them to yourself, and you start reading them to your sister, okay? And let's give her a hand. So congratulations, you're on your way. Next step will be confirmation. And with the children being here and when the numbers go down for COVID, I will start doing children's sermons whenever there are children here. So that is something else that we can look forward to. Um, there's gonna be a counters meeting in the office after service and it's only about five or 10 minutes. So if you count, please. Um, Come to that. I want to also announce deep in our prayers, Richard Kozlowski, his daughter, Christine Emery, has lung cancer. It's in both her lungs. It's very extensive, and they don't expect that she will survive. So keep Richard and Christine in your prayers. Um, and also, we've been praying for Alex Le Lelos, Helos, uh, he's had the first of 13 surgeries to put his left leg together again. And he's, he's, it's going to take about three months. So he thanks everyone for his prayers. Are there any other announcements for the Good Eye family? I see you down here. You're going to jump up to the mic? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, we're going to start next Saturday rehearsing for the cantata. And we have, we would like to invite anyone who would like to join our cantata. We do have singers that 
are very busy, but they give us their time for the cantata, and I hope to see you guys again this year. We're rehearsing with CDs till Karen can join us again. And um, so we'll be rehearsing this Saturday at 9.30 in the back room, and you'll be given a cantata book and um, a CD to rehearse at home if you would like. That would help a lot. Let's see, and tomorrow we're, the quilters are going to start putting together a, a quilt that we hope to sell chances on um, for Christmas, okay? All the proceeds will go to the church, of course. So if anybody wants to be involved in that, please join us tomorrow morning at not 10 o'clock. So um, we have been, we're gonna have to have another tie on so because we've got quite a few quilts in the nursery that we need to get tied so try and save a time for us for that um, if you would prefer to have it yeah we could do a tie on on a saturday afternoon if you would like so just uh let us know but we have to get hooked up with thriving so they give us the money to uh, buy materials for the quilting. And they've been very generous with us so far this year. We've gotten $500, so we have a lot of batting. So thank you all, and thank you, Thriving. So. Do we have any first time visitors who'd be so bold to raise their hand? We have a little pamphlet that tells who we are. Okay, none. Um, I understand there's a birthday today. Clint, you want to stand up? Bob gave you away, threw you under the bus. It's today is Clint's birthday. And let's regale him with happy birthday. You're not the only one who gets embarrassed at church. <laughs> I'm going to pass these around and then get back up there. And in, in the meanwhile, settle your hearts and minds as we start, as we prepare to worship. <sighs> I invite those who are able to please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to, want, to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lend us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But by the grace, the gift of grace, in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Amen. There is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. Christ. 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in praying the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like little children, that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle, and to the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not a helper, found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in the courses. What are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A reading from Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, 
having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I ask those who are able to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and a mother shall be gone, and father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So there are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of heaven as a little child will never enter it. And he took them in his arms and laid hands on them and blessed them. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I was a freshly ordained pastor, and I had a couple come to me because they wanted to get married. And I'd gone the usual premarital counseling. When we got to the wedding, I said, and what scripture would you like me to read for the homily during the wedding. And the woman spoke up and she said, this one here, Mark 10, two through 16. I said, okay. And then I gulped. Well, see, because I knew this couple, she had been divorced once and he had been already divorced twice. And this is, I'm not, this is kind of a tough sell here, folks, to talk about divorce in the midst of marriage. But, okay. So I did a lot of reading because this subject also me because I was remarried, as was my wife. We have both been married before. And to those of you who have found the one when you were young and you've been married to her for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 
God bless you. Many of us, though, and the statistics are about 50% of weddings, aren't so lucky. And things happen and people get divorced. And Jesus is really clear. So I did some studying into the background of this because there's that whole writ of Moses where you could write a certificate of divorce against a woman and divorce her. And we had to know that in those days, being a patriarchal society, a divorced woman was left penniless. She, would, she could not own property, she could not keep the kids, she got, had to leave the home, and she was pushed out onto the street. Plus, in those days, it was very common, particularly among those of, with means, is the way they could sleep around was they would divorce their wife and marry another woman, and then divorce her and marry another woman. And that way, wives got handed around like so much property. And Moses had basically said, look, so the other thing you really can't do is marry a woman again after you've divorced her, because that just makes it really clear all you wanted to do was sleep around a little bit. But what are we to do with this text today? in our world, where there is more equality between the genders. It's still not equal. There's still patriarchy involved. We've talked about it in Bible study, how many decisions are made by a bunch of old white men. But what do we do with this text, particularly in the case where I was sitting having to be divorced, having been divorced myself and remarried? How many people remember a song from the mid-70s, Paradise by the Dashboard Light? <laughs> Who remembers that song, Paradise by the Dashboard Light? What's that, you know, the, the, that, that whole scene of it, you know, I remember that day like it was yesterday, all the kids at school, they were wishing they were me at night because I never had a girl better looking than you did. I mean, and there's that whole scene in the car and the bit with the guy rounding third and coming for home and she says, stop right there, I gotta know right now, do you love me, will you love me forever? Will you need me, will you never leave me, will you take, make me so happy for the rest of your life, will you take me away, will you make me your wife? And he goes, let me sleep on it, baby, baby, let me sleep on it. And they go back and forth with this. You know, do you love me? Will you love me forever? Let me sleep on it. And finally says, I couldn't take it any longer. Oh, I was crazy. And I started swearing on my, to my God and on my mother's grave that I would love you to the end of time. That's right. I would love her to the end of time. And then they both sing, both the man and the woman sing. And now I'm praying for the end of time to hurry up and arrive because if I can't take another minute with you, I don't think that I could really survive. I'll never break my promise or forget my vow, but God only knows I could do it right now. Pray it for the end of time. That's all that I can do. Remember that one? Yes. Remember that song? Well, how many of us were in that situation? How many of us were too young or too broken to get married? We're after, had one thing. We had hormones coursing through our systems. We weren't thinking straight about it, but we ended up getting married for whatever reason was the wrong reason. And the person that we were married to was the wrong person. And rather than growing together and becoming true partners and watching each other's back, it became adversarial. It became abusive both ways. It became your emotions shut down because you just couldn't go through with it anymore. I mean, I remember for myself thinking in the midst of the, towards the end of my previous marriage, I'd get home and she would say, I need to run to the store, I need, and let's say milk and eggs. And she would go to the store and be gone for three hours. Now, we didn't live out in the country. It wasn't something you had to take a horse and it took a three hours to go to the store. The store was right around the corner, and to get milk and eggs, I mean, she should have been gone about a half hour, 45 minutes, but she was gone three hours, and that was fine with me. And, I mean, this was, she just wanted to be apart from me. And I started thinking, I started having these fantasies, 
Well, maybe she died in a fiery crash. And I realized how sinful that thinking was because the commandments are absolute. They are absolute. If you wish someone dead, you are murdering them. In fact, you flip someone off in traffic, you are murdering them. They are absolute. And Jimmy Carter put it very well in 1980 in an interview in Playboy when he said, I've been unfaithful to my wife. I've committed adultery. And they said, what? You, he goes, that's right. Because I've looked at other women with lust in my heart. And a guy out there, red-blooded male, who hasn't done that, looked at somebody with lust in their heart, and I'm, my women have thought the same thing too, although they're less likely to admit it. So we have all fall short. We are all sinners. We desire what our neighbors have. We fail to really keep the Sabbath. Keeping the Sabbath does not mean you come to church and then go party hardy, go to the football game and tailgate all afternoon. That's not what the Sabbath is. The Sabbath is a day of rest and relaxation and a time to meditate on your life with God. We rarely fail to keep the Sabbath. We know we don't use God's name in, in vain. We never say, oh my God, to anything, do we? And idols, we surround ourselves with idols. And whether those idols have initials like NFL, NBA, or Major League Baseball, or it's our car, or it's our job, or it's our children, or our home, our position in the world becomes something that comes between us and God. So let's face it. When it comes right down to it, we're a bunch of murderous, adulterous, covetous, idolatrous sinners. This is who we are. And we can pray for the end of time, but that's not going to change it if you're in a bad relationship. So it was last week's text. You remember last week's text about cutting off your hand or your feet or gouging out your eye if it's causing you to sin? It was last week's text when it rolled around and I started thinking about it. Which is worse, to stay in a marriage? Because I believe in what I heard one time at a pastor giving a homily at a wedding where he was talking to this young couple and he was saying, he was using the text when Moses encountered God in the burning bush and God said, take off your shoes because you're walking on holy ground. And he said, marriage is like that. You take off your shoes because it's holy ground. You are being joined together. It's an act of God. I've told people who wanna get married in a church, when you get married in the church, you are bringing God into your relationship in some sort of spiritual menage a trois. This is part of who you are together. And if you're not ready to do that, then just go to the justice of peace because marriage is and still is and will always be basically a civil function revolving property. So, what do us adulterous people do? A sinful, murderous, idolatrous people do. Where is the good news, particularly for those of us who thought we were in love and got married and decided it was better to go through life with one arm than to continue to pray for the end of time? People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to him, let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, and whenever you see truly I tell you in the Bible, you listen up because Jesus is bringing a point home. Whoever does not receive the children, kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And that's the key. We are all to our creator, but little children. For as senior and as wise and as proper and as mature as we get in our lives, we are still to God, little children. And when you tell a little child they are forgiven. 
What do they do? They say, yippee, and off they go, and they forget it. On they go. They take that forgiveness and hold it. So for those of us who are still hanging on to our sins of idolatry and murder and adultery, I said to you in the very beginning of this service, all have sinned short and fall short of the glory of God, but by the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteousness. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of sins. Know that as little children to God, when God says your sins are forgiven, your sins are forgiven. And on you go. Not holding it. And I said to another couple, if actually it was the last wedding that I did while I was still in Philadelphia, I said to them to look at one another. Look at one another and don't see the adult, the person who has all that life lived, all that water that's gone down the creek, pass, look and see the little child. And I invite you to look at your partner Look at your friends, look at someone else, and look at them and see the little child. Look in the mirror and see the little child, because the little child understands the gift of grace. And when you understand the gift of grace, the kingdom of God opens up to you. When you understand the, the gift of grace, and you start seeing not just yourself as a little child, but you see one another as little child, Children, sometimes little children stumble, stumble, sometimes they fall. But God picks us up and puts us back on our feet. And he has said, through the power of the cross, you are forgiven. This is the good news. Amen. Amen.
Christ, you have heard the word of faith, the gospel of salvation. We believe, we believe in, in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. He is seated and he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you have raised up faithful leaders throughout history. Empower those discerning a call to ministry and all seminarians that they continue to be formed for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. You have established a diverse and beautiful creation. Revive declining species and preserve endangered lands. Cultivate us, in us a sense of wonder for the world you created. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You desire for us not to be alone and to live in community with one another. Strengthen relationships between nations and peoples that we celebrate and support one human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You share in our experiences and trouble, trouble, struggles. Bless all who live with any mental or physical disability. Inspire creative communities, spaces, and environments that are accessible and hospitable. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You have established and nurtured relationships that extend beyond those gathered here today. Bless members who can no longer travel to worship with us and remind us of their continued role in this community of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You are the healer. We pray for all who are ill. Help them find appropriate care, especially Christina, Gail, Nancy, Helen, Sharon, Howard, Isabel, Isaiah, Jean, Linda, Antoinette, Sharon, Phil, Robert, Violet, Bob, Alex, Sydney, Diane, Ken, Karen, Raymond, Bob, Jermina, Clay, Joy, Suzette. Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. You promise eternal life to all your children. Thank you for the people of faith who have gone before us. Strengthen our trust we have in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, I invite you to lift either silently or aloud those prayers, those concerns, those situations or people that are in your heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts, known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a nice, safe passing of the peace with one another. Peace be with you.
I invite all who are able to stand and let us pray together the offering prayer with one voice. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain down from the heaven. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. And now, let us be so bold as to pray the words that we have been taught by our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite all to partake in communion with us. Let us partake together.
I invite those who are able to stand. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, people of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.